Hi, so I am long overdue a new pair of ballet shoes. Look at the state of these. This is a result. <laughs> Pull them up here. Oh, can you see the holes in the toes? Oh my goodness. So that is a lot of ballet classes that I've been teaching on a floor that's um, laminate flooring and every time my toe rubs over <laughs> the laminate, it rubs a hole in. So I thought as I had to sew some new elastics on my shoes that I would give you a little tutorial for how to do it if you are new to ballet and you maybe have never done it before. Exciting. Here are my lovely new shoes. <laughs> So I use Block, B-L-O-C-H. Um, I really love them. Um, what I particularly love about them is that once I've bought one pair, I know I can just reorder and I'm going to order the same size every time and I know they're going to fit me, I'd say like a glove, but clearly not like a glove, like a well-fitting pair of ballet shoes. So size-wise, uh, these are um, a 3.5, which is 3.5 UK, size C. And I am a 3... I'm between a three and a four so yeah a three and a half is perfect I have got a pair of size fours that I was gifted and they're too big for me so I would say if you're ordering block for the first time go with your shoe size um the c is the width so the c means I've got quite wide feet um put them in oh lovely so I get this extra bits out now the type of ballet shoe that I favor are canvas and they're pink you can get all different colors um they are split soled which means that when you point your foot as opposed to when i first started ballet about 40 49 years ago <laughs> that's a very long time uh we didn't have such a thing as split soles it was all in one complete piece with these they do make your feet they hug to your feet more so they make your feet look like they're pointing um also um they've got elasticated drawstrings which we didn't have when we were children they weren't there was no flex in them and this is the this is the game changer the elastic obviously they've sewed it on at one end but not the other uh but when i was a child we used to do our elastics by folding it over like this imagine there's no elastics on there and stitching where the fold was with one piece of elastic and then your mum would put it across that way she was stitching you slide your foot in which was fine uh, although a lot of parents would do it too far back or too far forwards and the shoe would still flip off but sewing them how we're going to do it today with a cross shape uh, just just makes the shoe fit so much better so first of all there's not really a right or a left <laughs> so you just have to put them on and decide by pulling the elastics in, let me go back a little bit, which foot you prefer. Once you've worn them once, particularly if you've got slightly, not like I've got a dirty floor, but if you have got a slightly dirty floor that your toe will rub and you'll be able to see where um, your big toe was and then that will become your right foot or your left foot. So I'm just gonna pop them on and decide, you know what, I'm happy with them like that. You just, so I've got an awful lot of extra elastic now I've pulled it. So I've done it in a little bow, but what I am going to do is you will need for this your scissors and you will need a needle and thread as well. So I'm just going to chop off the extra. I've taken off about that much. You don't need to necessarily um, take off too much. What you want to be able to do is to do a little bow and be able to tuck it inside and not have it uh, sticking in your foot, yeah? So we've done one side, let's do the other. I mean, it's really long, don't need this much elastic. So you do it in a knot, do a little bow if you want to, you could double knot it if you want to do. You just don't want too much going on down there because it's gonna, it leaves, <laughs> it leaves an imprint on your foot. <laughs> so you've done a long class, you end up with a nice little imprint. So it in all tucked away now we're on to phase two so this um, situation I've got here of the elastics being attached at the back um, what you're going to do is start with one foot and you're going to go from the outside to the inside seam now if I'm holding it there can you see I already have an awful lot of extra elastic I want it to go kind of halfway down the seam so I'm going to chop off Piece about that big, yes. 
because uh, I want some to stitch. If you see, see a pair I did earlier, you'll see that I stitched them in about that far. Um, so yeah, you do need to have something to stitch it to, but you don't want to have anything that's going to stick in you. So from the outside, if I swivel around, you do not want it to be going over your bone here. You want it to kind of come under. And I'm heading towards, let's see what I did with the other one. I'm heading towards the seam on the inside and I still probably actually could cut a tiny bit more off because it's tickling my foot. And that is where I'm going to aim to go with it, about there-ish, yeah. And it's a good idea to kind of maybe stand up, move your foot around and just feel how that feels. Uh, you will need some white or some pale pink cotton or whatever color your shoes are and a needle. Ah, I threaded one up earlier. <laughs> uh, my top tip for doing your needle is either get self, uh, I think they call it self threading needle where you just push it on and it just threads itself. Um, double thread it so you've got two strands of the same length and if you, this is something my mother taught me, if you slightly, <laughs> get your fingers wet, roll it, roll it round a couple of times, roll again, I'm going to come close and pull, you end up with a little knot on the end and you've not had to do anything complicated. So I'm going to go with about there-ish. So obviously you want to take the foot out of your shoe while you are stitching. Try and keep it at the same angle. Uh, We're just going to take a simple, um, I'm going to come really close so I can show you. A simple little stitch going in and through and you've got knot if you want to be super tidy you can tuck the knot the naughty knot inside so again it's underneath the lace I will just show you there and you just want to stitch down and through and we're forming, just going around the edge, around the corner, around the bottom. So you want to basically attach every part of your elastic to, and you're not going through the entire two thicknesses. You are just going through, in this case, the white part. So don't go through all the way through to the pink bit. So you'll end up with stitches on the outside of your shoe. It doesn't matter if you do, but uh, you might find that if you are near the seam, that it's hard to thread it through. That's where nails, I, that's where thimbles were invented, I think. Uh, so you're just going to thread through there. When you get to the top, You are going to stitch across the top. You don't want this bit loose either. Do not stitch the actual casement where the elastic is because you won't be able to uh, tie, tighten or loosen your elastics if you've gone through that. So you just want to go across just a couple of stitches just to keep it nice and tight and attached. Because I want these to last me. As you can see, I wear my <laughs> I wear my shoes until they literally my toes come out. So I don't want the reason that I stop wearing my shoes to be because the elastics have dropped off, because that's just annoying. And when you get to the last little bit, just take a few stitches. This is probably the most important bit, is just to keep stitching over the same spot so that it doesn't come unstitched. And again, you could to make sure you've got no loose ends, go underneath the whole piece of elastic, come out the other side and get your scissors and chop it off. Now, I've now got enough elastic, uh, sorry, not elastic, cotton, I think. I'll do this again. So you wrap it around, before you line that up, roll it around and pull end up the little knot. So on the other side, so you need to put your foot back in your shoe again now because we're going to need to do some more cutting. So, sliding it in, all comfy, oh that feels nice. And then you're going to go the other way, so you're coming from the inside 
to the outside and again head towards just in front of the seam of your shoe snipping off like the same amount it might not be the same amount so never just cut <laughs> never cut until you put your foot in because you just don't know everyone's feet are different shapes and sizes um, and yeah as my mum always said you could always add more but you know you can always take more off but you can't add more if you've chopped it off so can you see how I've got a lovely cross there which means that when I point my foot this shoe is being pulled upwards and there's nothing gaping and it's just super comfortable and I can't wait to wear them for class so I've got that lined up needle at the ready ready to stitch on the other side now this one's quite close to the um, seam a little fiddly but once it gets started be fine so remembering again you might want to tuck the knot in underneath the elastic stitching down neat little stitches make sure you don't stitch anything in there that you don't want to be in there <laughs> like the elastic or the, other, the elastic from the other side we don't want that ow don't prick your finger and we're just going to go around the bottom Oops, see I have just done that, I've stitched the elastic in, um, across. So, ballet shoes, I always say to new students um, that you don't need to have the ballet shoes, you don't need to have the leotard and the tights and the ballet bun to start off with, but they are a bit of a game changer because they kind of, they're so simple and they're not particularly that expensive. Um, they're less than 15 pounds, so um, you know they're not an expensive investment as you know as hobbies go. Some hobbies, especially like things like crafting, get really expensive. Um, but they give you that perfect what I call slip grip ratio on the floor. In other words, when you are dancing in socks, which I maybe would say to some students, oh, if you haven't got ballet shoes, wear socks. Sometimes it can be a bit too slippery. You can, don't feel, you know, grounded to the floor and your feet that are supposed to be in this ballet turned out position slide inwards. Um, so obviously that's not ideal. But then students that go barefooted are too stuck to the floor. And for example, when we're trying to do something that involves turning or going through the floor with your foot pointing, but particularly turning, trying to do a pirouette with bare feet, it's like an exfoliation. <laughs> so um, here we go, I'm around the edge now. So I'm just gonna stitch it off and I'm gonna need light, hide my thread and trim it off. And let's see if <laughs> if I've stitched it in the right place. So we have the cross, we have the foot in. I am just going to redo this bit because it's not quite right. Stick it in there and there we go. So I am going to go off and do my, my other shoe and um, hopefully that's been helpful for you. Um, so as I mentioned before, they are Block, B-L-O-C-H, and you can buy them online. Uh, you can get this, lots of other brilliant brands as well. I just like to only recommend things that I've personally tried and tested. And uh, yeah, let me just stand up, show you. So there's the, the shoe with that, there's the shoe with can see how supportive my foot is when I'm pointing that way and I am very much looking forward to teaching my class in them later today uh, if you would like to see more videos like this particularly if you are a beginner and you want to learn uh, the steps I will be posting more videos so please click subscribe here and I look forward to sharing some more ballet uh, knowledge with you soon